It's another beautiful Sunday afternoon. This is Robin Mines. Welcome. My name is Abu Ka Obiuchi. And sorry for the delayed starts where they're announcing the results of the Ondo State election. Congratulations to the APC candidates, Rotimi Akeridolu, who's been re-elected as the governor for the next four years. But moving on with the show now, um, we're going to be talking about NSARS, um, the special anti-robbery squad, uh, which has been in the news for the past week um, with a hashtag trending globally uh, with Nigerians leading the movement. And we just got news from the Inspector General of Police saying that the special anti Robbery squad across all the 36 states and the federal capital have been dissolved and disbanded with immediate effect. All officers and men serving in the unit will be redeployed to other police commands, formations, and units. A new policing arrangement for tackling the offenses of armed robbery and other violent crimes will be unveiled to the public very soon. We're going to be talking about that and more, and I have you with me, Natasha Akidi. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. So um, there's, there's a lot that's happened in the last week. You have been also been a huge part of the protest that's gone across uh, Nigeria. We've heard um, also news about uh, protesters being attacked, and we even had reported deaths in a, in a few states. Um, first of all, hearing this news now, does this make you feel like you've won the battle? Um, partially. <coughs> I would say partially. Um, like you earlier said, a lot of lives been lost. Rest in peace, Jumo, from Oyo State. What happens to these guys? They lost their life while peacefully protesting for what we as a youth are demanding. We need justice for yeah. these guys. What happens to the SAS officials that shot them? What happens? They're being redeployed into other units of the police force. But we need justice yeah. for everyone that has lost their lives in this battle. What was different with this time? Because this NSARS movement is about three years old. What was different about this time that made it so organic, that made people say, you know what, this time enough is enough? What was it for you that was different? For me, my tired is tired. And I also know for a fact that every Nigerian youth's tired is tired. We've been on and about this since 2017. We've been hearing the certain procedures to go through as to how SARS can be banned. No reports yet. And in 2020, our tired is tired. I'm not free to go out to Lekki because I'm scared for my life. It's not about being a public figure. I am actually scared for my life. These guys don't look at anybody's face. Yeah. I am scared for my life. So we have gotten to the point where our tired is tired. There's an extent to, to which you can stretch a rubber band. We've gotten to that climax. We've gotten to limits. Yeah. And we're speaking. And we're demanding. And we're requesting. Yeah. So... For me, it's, it's a partial win. Because, I mean, that was literally the goal for a lot of people, ending the, the SARS as a unit. Ending which has... SARS and reforming the police force. Yes. So how do we start that conversation now? Because there's a belief now that, okay, this goal has been met. A lot of people are, I mean, I even saw on Twitter, congratulations, Nigeria is trending, or Nigerians is trending. People are excited that, okay, we've won this battle. Do you get a sense that this might cool things off a little bit? Or how do you sustain the momentum now? For me, I'm a bit uncertain about this win. I am uncertain about this win. I, I really, really am uncertain yeah. about this win. It just doesn't seem right. For whatever reason, it just doesn't seem right. It well, just doesn't. There's always a talk, you know, about, you know, people in entertainment or public figures being a part of conversations like yeah. this. Um, and there are times when people are called out. We saw that happen a lot in the past yeah. week where certain public figures were called out for not maybe speaking up early enough or not speaking up enough. Or not speaking up, or not speaking up at all. Do you feel that there's a duty in times like this? Because this movement was, was going to happen in spite of anybody who wanted to join or not. Do you feel like people like you have a duty to be a part of things like this? And do you think it helps in any way? Well, I think it's everyone's duty. This is something that affects everybody, directly or indirectly. I feel it's everyone's duty. Um, these celebrities, you have the youth of Nigeria. We buy your stuff. We stream your music. Do you understand? Yeah. We make you who you are. So when it comes to times like this, it's a collective effort from everybody. Celebrity, public figure, the average Nigerian. All hands has to be on deck. Yeah. Because so we can't... We're seeing images now of um, Jimo Ishak, who was, who was killed in um, Ogbomosho. Um, oh, your state. No, your state. Um, yesterday, he was, uh, he had gone out to sort of join the protest, but he was an innocent bystander, and um, he was killed, pretty much, by the police. And um, we don't know. Which is very who, sad. Yes. In 2020, in the 21st century, this is very sad. 
I shed tears whenever I see all of these videos. It is very sad. These people are not coming back. We need to understand they're dead and they are gone. What happens? We need justice for these guys. We actually do need justice for these guys. So how do, that's a, that's a, how do we sustain this conversation now? Because I get you, and I know that it, from what I've seen already on social media, there's a sense of, a sigh of relief, which is good. Yeah. Because, I mean, one battle is one. But it's just one of so many. Because the reform of the police, I mean, the police has, the police conversation didn't start today with SARS. We've always known, I mean, everybody who's been at the checkpoints at any point in their lives knows what could happen uh, yeah. in places like that, you know. And you're talking about justice now, there's Jim Oishak, there's so many other people who have died in the cause which has brought us to this point. The killing, in, I mean, the, sh the shooting in Ugeli uh, on Saturday last week, which started all of this, you know. How do we find these people? How do we sustain the conversation? There's people in, SARS is going to be redeployed now, we're hearing. The personnel in there in the same police organization. How do we now start having this conversation? Because the government has said, oh, there's no leader of this movement. Who do we talk to? Do we need a leader? S speak to <laughs> us. There's no face to this peaceful protest. There's the face of the Nigerian youth. It's everybody speaking all at once. It's everybody that is tired, yeah. really. So it's everyone speaking. There really isn't no face at all. Everyone's face is the face. Yeah. Have you, do you have any personal stories that you've encountered with the police or someone you know? Yes, I, I do have a terrible experience with SARS. I do have when was this? terrible. This was way back 2018, okay. a year uh, um, before last year. This was way back 2018. Um, they arrested my delivery guy. He came, he came to where I was. He brought my ring lights and they held him. I had to go downstairs and I said, okay, what's happening? He said, oh, he's with two ATM cards. Two ATM cards, same surname. This is for his older brother, and this is for him. Why not let him go? Oh, he's, he's resisting arrest. And they handcuffed this guy. They drove off with him. I tried to get him back. I took a taxi. It was a dreadful experience. And they made him sleep at Rupoko. That's our head office in Portaco City, Rupoko. The next day, I went to my lawyer. They said, you come. Come and start writing statements. Write this, and they're telling you what to write. They told me what to write, and I felt really helpless because my lawyer couldn't even do anything. It's like we are above the law. That is the, 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 the type of idea they give to us. We are above the law. You can't do anything. We are the ones in charge. And I listened, and I just was writing everything. We're saying, oh, sit on the floor. He told me to sit on the floor, and I did. With my 200 and how many K followers, I sat on the floor. For me, I was scared for my life. And I was scared for my delivery guy's life. I just wanted everybody to live there and live there safe. It was not... The experience was very terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. You had to pay to, to get him out? No, I did not pay to get him out because I think their head at some point came, um, came so late that day. But then he, he was willing to hear from me and... And I went there, explained the whole situation, and explained everything. He's a delivery guy. This is older brother. His older brother joined me alongside the lawyer. Everybody is over. Right state message on the floor. That, that. And he reasoned with us and, and said, oh, everybody can go. We don't have to pay for yeah. anything. But initially, these SARS officials were trying to extort me. They were trying to extort me, drove me to the ATM. It was a whole lot that happens with them. And if yeah. I have to go through the whole story... Yeah, this, this will mean, take a long time. The conversation of profiling is what has been the biggest issue with with SARS as a whole, as a, as a unit. You know, they profile you based on how you dress, what kind of haircut you have, what phones you're carrying, if you're carrying a laptop. And there's this. First of all, is that justified? Because let's not pretend that there's no problem with crime in Nigeria. There is crime, but is profiling the answer? You think? How, now, how do you? How do they now draw that line to decide who's who? The song. India, Ariel sang, I am not my hair. I don't think anybody should be judged by their looks. I don't think anybody should be judged by their looks. The entertainment industry deserves a lot of accolades. They do deserve a lot of accolades. And there are lots of employed people that have been employed from what? The entertainment industry. It is very wrong for anybody to be judged by their looks or to be stereotyped by their looks. Because I have gold hair on doesn't mean I'm dating a Yahoo boy and automatically I am a Yahoo girl. Because I have a laptop doesn't make me armed. I'm not armed by having a laptop. This is the technology we're in. Everybody, everybody has an iPhone now. Everybody has a laptop now. So you don't stereotype it. Because I have an iPhone, 
I'm automatically a fraudster. That's wrong. You don't judge people by their looks. You judge them by their character. It is very, very wrong for the youths to be profiled because of how they dress, because yeah. of their dreadlocks, because of their phones, because of their laptops. Fam, nah. And there's people who say, okay, I mean, SARS is supposed to be fighting cybercrime. <laughs> which is not their designation, by the way. They are meant to find arm robbery. But uh, so Yahoo, Yahoo is a problem. You know, cybercrime is a problem. A lot of young people are involved in this, and they're actually doing some good to get that out of the way. What happens to that fight? SAS, Special Anti-Robbery Squad, <laughs> it has nothing to do with cyber. It has nothing to do with you stopping me on the way to search my phone, telling me unlock my phone with so much authority. Unlock my phone. You don't even have a name tag. What is your name? And then I don't have the right to ask you questions, but then you have the right to dish out instructions and I have to obey it. Why? <laughs> and what, what about arm robbery? Because, I mean, we have a unit who's supposed to fight arm robbery. There is a special unit for arm robbery. Are you worried about the rise in crime as a result of this disbandment now? I'm more worried about the SAS officials on the road. And that's why I said earlier that this dissolvement doesn't seem right to me. SARS got banned last week over Twitter. I went out to peacefully protest and I saw SARS officials on the road. It just After doesn't seem... they were seem... told to leave the street. Yes. And I saw SARS officials on the road harassing an individual. It, just, it really doesn't seem right. They're being recruited into what department? We're saying reform the police force. Fine, the SARS has been dissolved. And they're being recruited into what department? Yeah. Really, or into what unit, really? Well, to, to be fair, to be fair to the to the police, uh, the inspector general of police, he did say talk about the reforms and how stakeholders were going to be invited. I said a stakeholders forum will be launched to provide an avenue for citizens to regularly interface and advise the police authority on issues touching on the general public. You're laughing at that. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You don't believe that? I don't believe it. <laughs> It's still the same Nigeria. This SAS issue has been on since 2017, like you said. Yes. And like I know. And in 2020, it's been dissolved. How many years later? Yeah. So when is this reform police force coming? How soon? When you say very soon, that's indefinite. How soon? Is it tomorrow? Is it this week? Is it next week? Is it 2030? When? Yeah. I mean, so many more images, Abuja in particular, there was tear gas, there was uh, water cannon sprayed at protesters. Um, peaceful protesters, shots. we need to point out. Peaceful on protesters, armed, yes. On armed protesters. And these are some of the things I believe a lot of people are very, you know, passionate about or angry about, saying if people are coming out to protest peacefully, why not let them protest if they are not attacking anybody? We have not just our voices anything. and our play cards. So, but this, this reform looks like it's going to be, I mean, it's a long-term solution. You don't reform an organization like the police force in one day. Do you think people are going to be patient enough? Because it's going to be a long journey. This is an organization that's existed like this for at least 60 years, whether we like it or not. And this reform conversation is going to be a long one. How much, of, how much time do you think people are willing to give, considering how much passion there is now? Well, l like I said, our tired is tired. So wh whatever you're doing, <laughs> get on with it already. Because yeah. our tired is tired. We took it out to the streets peacefully. Yeah. We're not relenting. What do you want to see from government as we wrap this up? What do you want to see from government? What the what youth. Do you, what do you want the president to speak yeah, to Yeah, what the what youth, you what everybody wants to see from the government. Reform the police force. We need our police officers well taken care of. And justice. Yes. We, because you can't be hungry and you're on the streets. You would not be happy when you see me looking all dressed or looking rich. That arm of government needs to be reformed. Um, basically. That's basically. We'll come into other uh, uh, um, social amenities not being met later. A long list. <laughs> Accountability later. But for now, this is all what we are on about. So you're not relenting in spite of the disbandment? I'll be watching. I'll be watching to see how this reform police force, how it's going to come true. I'll be watching. Yeah. Because really. there's people who have said, I mean, I'll this, be watching, this is really. not, the, like you said, this is not the first time we're hearing of a disbandment of, uh, it's, yeah. of uh, do you, what will it take? Does it take the president saying it himself? Because this is Inspector General of Police. Who has well, if, if it means him coming to address us, I mean, you come to address us when you need our votes. 
So why not now? You address us when you need our votes. And this is the youth saying, if you have to address us, then you should address us. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should. Well, thank you very much, Natasha uh, Akide, oh. um, for joining us today. Hopefully, um, this is one step of, in so many, of so many, that we need to be talking about. And it's glad, gladdening news that this has happened. And of course, uh, sad that a lot of lives have been lost as a result. Once again, rest in peace to Jimo Ishiak, who yeah. lost his life uh, as a result of this. We're going to take a break now and be right back. Please don't go away. All right, welcome back. We're still talking and SARS, and I'm joined now by Wale Oshunde, who's a lawyer. Thanks for being here today. So yes, we are talking NSARS. It's been a very heavy week in Nigeria. A lot of people, it started out, you know, like whispers. For the last three years, pretty much, it's been, it's been on. But this week, it became very organic. And, you know, we saw protests across the, across the country. And like, like just a, about an hour ago there, about Inspector General of Police announced uh, the full disbandment of, of, of the Special anti robbery Squad uh, units, and, uh, which is cheering news. So a lot of people are excited about that. But what got a lot of people a little confused or wary of the announcement is the fact that the officers are going to be redeployed into other units in the Nigerian police force. How does that sit with you? So you see, the, the very first point of call for me is the fact that we must all get to that juncture where we tell ourselves the truth. The police is supposed to be our friends. I mean, our, I mean our friend, right? And if they are not doing what they should do as fellow citizens of the country, and then people who are also responsible and accountable to government, if they are not doing that very well, then there is a problem. So we must then begin to address the functional deficiencies in our land. That is exactly what we must begin to do first of all. Now, I'm not even bothered about whether somebody is going to be redeployed and what have you, but I'm bothered about the character, the orientation, and the mental element of that fellow that will be you know, uh, in the police force. And so that's exactly where we must, we must then begin to look at all of these issues very dispassionately, very creditably, you know, and very seriously. You see, as a country, we must begin to look at St. Limes and then we begin to copy whatever is good and is, you know, admirable, you know, in whatever they are doing. If you look at the police all over the world, or should I say in advanced situations, you see that they are very respectful. The, the, the way well, they even, not. absolutely, even when they are arresting you, they, they'll be very respectful. Do you want your coffee? Do you want some, I mean, a cup of water or you know, whatever? And they're arresting you. In fact, in some other times, they would even call you to say, we are coming to visit you today or we are coming to arrest you. So you are prepared, you know, and all of that. So, and then you don't even begin to just engage people without investigating them, without being very sure that they are criminals or that they are, that, you know, they can be alleged of certain offenses and all that. What you find here, even by ordinary police officers, is that you're going on the road, then somebody stops you. Hey, wait. And what do you have in your bag? And what is in your pocket? And, oh, who's the owner of this ATM card? Uh, oh, and, and I even add that some police officers even have POS machines. How do you even explain that? I do not even get it. So, so these are functional problems that we need to fix. So it is really not about the fact that somebody is being redeployed and is now going to be, uh, you know, adding FIU or one other segment of the police force. Well, let's, let's go to Abuja now, and, and we're joined now um, via Skype uh, to continue this uh, NSAS conversation. Um, there's so much to talk about. I believe we're joined by Indicato, I believe. Um, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Oh, sorry, we're joined Good by Honorable afternoon. Austin Brimo. Can you hear me? Very well, thanks. You're a media representative for the Nigerian Police Commission. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we just heard the news from the Inspector General of Police. Um, but a lot of Nigerians, like I said, are a little confused about the redeployment of personnel from SARS because there's a lot of anger at the personnel, not necessarily the Nigerian Police Force, even though that's a whole other conversation. How is this redeployment supposed to work? Uh, redeployment of uh, the SARS uh, operatives yes. is a normal reorganization in the police force. Uh, uh, Ebuka, I represent South South and the media in the Police Service Commission. Incidentally, the Police Service Commission is the parents of the Nigerian Police Force. Uh, the Police Service Commission is responsible for the policy making body for the Nigerian Police Force. We are responsible for recruiting discipline and promotion of all officers below the rank of Inspector General of Police. 
Uh, normal redeployment and recognition in the police force has been a continuous process, and it will continue. Uh, first of all, let me applaud Nigerians. Let me commend all those who, who raise their voices against the brutality of, of uh, the special anti-robbery squad. Uh, almost everyone has been a victim. Uh, we are happy that we've come to realize that uh, their operational base was faulty and they, they eventually be disbanded. Uh, let us be patient with the IGP to carry out its reforms. And uh, but more importantly, Ebuka, is that Nigerians should ask, what is the role of police service commission in all this? Why do they have a constitutional role to play in managing Nigerian police? Why do we have to have quasi bodies that we have to report to? Incidentally, 28th and 29th of September, it is in the news that the Nigerian Police Service Commission, the Police Service Commission treated about 43 cases of indiscipline within the force. 43 officers, out of which 10, including an assistant commissioner of police, were dismissed. 10 out of uh, 9 were, were reduced in rank, and others, so many disciplinary measures were taken. But you can imagine how long it will have taken for such cases to get to the commission. So if we have a body like the Police Service Commission that is constitutionally saddled with the responsibility of maintaining discipline in the force, what are we doing with that kind of a body? Is the body functional? I, I want to appeal to Nigerians to go into the street and demand for independence for the Police Service Commission, just like you have an independent INEC. The Police Service Commission cannot carry out its constitutional responsibilities because they are not dependent. We are supposed to have offices in the 36 states of the Federation where citizens can rush to to report a SARS or to report brutality in any police formation. We are supposed to complain to Police Service Commission, not National Human Rights Commission. The, the, Is, the constitutional uh, responsibility of discipline and maintaining sanity in Nigerian police for rest with the Police Service Commission. We don't have any office in any state of the Federation. In fact, the Police Service Commission has no office. We are squatting at the Federal Secretariat, scattered in all the wings. No specific office that you can report to. As I'm talking to you now, the staff of Police Service Commission ends less than the Nigerian police force. The, the, the service you are supposed to superintend and check. So what is wrong with Nigerians? If we do not want the Police Service Commission, why don't you scrap it, Ebuka? I think so I need, I need, to, to, I need to come in here. I need to come in here. I, I, I hear, I hear what you're do. saying, and a lot of people, uh, I mean, most people don't even know what the Police Service Commission is supposed to do. It's, it's because we have all of these parastatals and agencies that just exist, almost uh, seeming like they don't have any of these functions. But two questions. First of all, why did it take this long for government to listen? Because the NSARS movement started in 2017. The Police Service Commission is supposed to be charged with things like this, knowing, like you said, that every Nigerian is a, has been a victim of SARS brutality. Why did it take three years? And why did it take this long in this past week for government to listen. And secondly, we've lost lives. Jimo Ishiak was uh, particularly uh, noticeable for a lot of people yesterday. He was shot dead by a policeman. How are we going to get justice for these people? I can assure you, let me start from your last question. I can assure you, Ebuka, that justice will be done. We believe that uh, that event has been recorded. We're expecting a full report and investigation on that. And um, we are going to take action. We don't just dismiss officers. We dismiss and recommend for prosecution in the regular courts. That is the power the commission has. We even, even retired officers can be dismissed. We have two officers that are retired from the Nigerian police force. That we are, one was reduced, reduced in rank. One was dismissed even after retirement. So I can assure Nigerians that well reported and documented cases during this very, uh, very protest, peaceful as it was, uh, any molestation, if you can get well-documented evidence to us. We have uh, platforms. Unfortunately, they may not be everywhere, but we have platforms, and we keep advertising them within the very, very meager resources available to the Commission. I can repeat them to Nigerians to send reports to the Commission, and it is only we that have that power to discipline any police officer below the rank of Inspector General of Police. If you permit me, I can read our, our platforms on this channel so that Nigerians can avail themselves the opportunity to, to reach the commission with every available evidence. And I can assure you that none of them will go unpunished. Okay, I'll come back to you. Let me, let me quickly ask you, uh, Wale, very quickly. Um, th this protests have become a very big talking point, you know, about how peaceful they were for the most part. 
mostly turn violent by the police because, you know, we saw tear gas being sprayed, we saw gunshots, we saw people being killed. You know, this right to protest, looking at the way things turned out in the past week, how do you feel? Are you confident enough about, you know, the power of the Nigerian citizen to protest? Absolutely. I mean, and, you know, it's a constitutional right. You see, Section 40 of our Constitution is very clear. You know, uh, you talk about the right to peaceful assembly and, you know, uh, association. You know, it's, so it's a constitutional right. No government can even take it away. Nobody can yank it off Nigerians. So the moment we see a different in our society and then we think that the government should take the bull by the horn and do the right thing, then everybody has the right, or should I say every Nigerian, has that right to exercise his or her own, you know, uh, uh, conscience or whatever expression that, that, that he or she has, you know. And I, I think the government is now getting to know that Nigerians are very powerful people. And, you know, we've been saying it, the, uh, the greatest office of the land is the office of the citizen. And that is why every politician in this country, especially people who are holding public offices now, must know that people are watching and then it would never be business as usual. People are not going to take it so easy with people who are, you know, who are taking their rights for granted. Yes. And then right now, uh, with respect to your question, especially with respect to protests, you see everybody has that right and that power and that flexibility to exercise that constitutional mandate. All right, um, let me go back to Abuja now, Honorable Austin Bremo. Uh, you didn't answer my, my first question, though, about you know, why, why things took this long. Um, well, it, I wouldn't say things have taken long to get to the level it is. Uh, it, the process of reforming the police is a gradual thing. And um, you know all the problems. For instance, when this protest started, you, down to 2017, it's been all along SARS to enga be engaged in their very special role of anti-robbery and then uh, perhaps kidnapping. But when you look at other crimes, like cyber crimes and um, all the other things that they have to eventually be diverted to, you find that there was a lacuna. We, the police needed to maybe to create a special anti-fraud I mean, anti department again to cope with the large numbers of uh, cyber crimes that were being reported daily. So, I mean, and then Blair, let me let you know what really led to it. If you had listened to the retired IGP, Suleiman Abba, four days ago on Good Morning Nigeria, he said that clearly that this SARS were not as bad as it were. But operational problems, at a point, they were moved away from state commands and centralized under the IGP. And when you move a young officer, you can no longer report to an assistant commissioner down the line. You can no longer report to a commissioner down the line. Your boss is the overall boss. You begin to look down on your, on your seniors. And then this was where we got it wrong. And I agree with Suleiman Abba that if we had allowed the operational commands to be even at the lowest level, a DSP will not even report to, to a, a, a senior who, who is a, a assistant commissioner, deputy commissioner, commissioner, AIG, DIG, you are reporting straight to IG. It, it, it makes them power drunk. And this was where we lost it. And that's why the gradual degeneration continued from that 2017 gradually, gradually, until we have to get this far in the present protest level. All but right, I I'll must also warn my brother Buka that yeah. uh, the protest, the pro I, won't, I won't state that the protest as you see it was not as, we, as it should have been. So that we get, we warn ourselves, a lot of criminals, criminal elements infiltrated this protest. I've been on it for the past two days. In Abuja, it was quite peaceful. I intervened in several of the places and made sure no protester was arrested or detained in any station. I got a post from Abekuta that's the protesters who went to the uh, Alakes uh, Palace, they were addressed by the CP and, and the traditional ruler in okay, Abekuta. I need, I need, I need to, I need to, a, I'll come back to you, sir. group now went... Uh, I'll, I'll come back to you, sorry, sorry. I'll come back to you. I just need to quickly have another guest joining us, uh, Indikato, who's a human rights activist uh, in Abuja, who has been at the center of most of the protests there. Indy, if you can hear me, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Hi, Abuja. I can Sorry, see you've lost your voice. voice. Looks like you've been doing a lot of shouting in the last couple of days. <laughs> I was tear gassed yesterday. Tell us about that, because just... we saw a lot of the videos and pictures from Abuja. I mean, it looks like Abuja was pretty heated with the protest. How did it get to that point? Well, it was. It, it was. And what was so upsetting was throughout, we were assured that nothing was going to happen. And it scares me. It just shows that, look, in the line of issues, like in the line of command, there is no central authority in the Nigerian police force. 
because calls were going out to Frankumba. He said, oh, he's upstairs. He's just going to eat. Nothing is happening. Everything is peaceful. And then evening came and they just unleashed on us. And this is right at the IG's office. Right as we speak, Ebuka, if you scroll through your social media, your people in Abuja are being attacked by the police right now. And so what is the IG telling us? If the IG is telling us he has ended SARS, it means that he's saying he agrees with our protest. He agrees with the reason for our protest. So Mr. IG, if you agree with the reason for our protest, why are we being attacked, shot at, hot water being thrown at us, young women being beaten, young men and women having to run into the bush right now? So if you say you agree with why we are protesting and you have ended SARS, why is your why are your police officers attacking and brutalizing brutalizing protesters and young people right now as I speak? How did you so, is not so, 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 sorry to cut you there? How did you get to that point? Was there a trigger? Because like you said, yes, you were protesting, you're in front of the IG's office. How did it get to the point where tear gas became the option? They would, they would come out. And, you know, you would have CSPs, Deputy Commissioner, uh, Commissioners of Police, and young people said, no, we don't want to talk to anybody but the IG of Police. Your citizens are in front of the office of the IG of Police. He should come out and address us. And look, it's not too much to ask. It's not too much to demand. And to the man from the Police Service Commission, I don't know how he wants young people to feel when you say you can run to them, but he's also saying that the answer to civil disobedience anywhere should be brutalizing and killing. What was the young man doing in Obamashaw that he was killed? This is not the point. You must read the room. This is not the point where you start accusing youth of criminal activities. We have not spoken about all the police officers who attacked young people. What do you do in a country where people are fed up and do not have justice? Nigeria has lost the concept of justice. That is a problem. And when a country has lost the concept of justice, people will interpret justice how they know it. No, back to the IG reading that paper for us. We want to see this in the Constitution. You are telling us that you are taking these same rogue officers and you're putting them, inducting them back into other units in the police. That does not work. Let's come back to the other units in the police. The people who are attacking the protesters today in Abuja are not SARS officers. That is a big problem. It means that, look, this conversation starts at NSAS and ends with reforming the police. And when we say reform the police, it is not that police reform act which gives the police unfettered access to people to arrest without warrants that we are talking about. No, Nigerian youth deserve better. And this is an opportunity to tell everyone that, no, it is not over. What has been read on that paper does not translate to what is happening on the streets right now. It is not hearsay. The young people you are hearing about are people that I know. People who work in government, people who own their own organizations, children of the who is who. Nobody is exempt from what is happening right now. We are all being attacked. I was attacked yesterday. I handle human rights right now. It's not working, Ebuka. It's not working. You're calling different levels of the government and they're telling you that the police are sure that there will be no attack. So why is the IGP and his men showing us that there is no central command, that PSP Aisha Yusuf can take orders even when they claim that the IGP or police said that young people and protesters should not be attacked? Something is not adding up. Something is not adding up, Ebuka, and young people must not back down. I'll come back to you, Ndi. Very passionate there. And Wale, you hear this. And um, you can see that, like, like we said, uh, Lagos was pretty much peaceful. You know, protests have happened every day in, this, in, in the city of Lagos. Um, but we've seen these clips from Abuja. We've seen the pictures. We've seen the videos. We've seen people arrested in, across different states. And what, as I was talking about, you know, the rights of the citizen to protest. When you, see, you hear her and how passionate she is, does it give you a feel that the government understands this right? It's unfortunate. And I think, first of all, I'd like to sympathize with my brothers and sisters who were on the streets, and then, of course, uh, those who were uh, chased away, you know, in a very ruthless manner uh, right there. You know, that, that's really unfortunate and uncalled for. It wasn't necessary at all. You know, I think I saw one other clip where a particular commissioner of police was trying to talk to the people, you know, was trying to also even join the protest and all that, and I think that's actually the way to go. Uh, you see a series of protests in, you know, these so-called sink lines, and you see the way even police officers would even join 
some protesters just to, you know, engage them, you know, and let them also feel uh, that they are also part of the movement and all that. And then, you know, stylishly, you know, strategically now take over, uh, you know, the reins of affairs from them and all that. And then, you know, uh, ask them to go. That's exactly what we should begin to do. But you see, let me tell you something. I'm really worried about the sincerity on the part of government and, of course, the police force. Because now that you have said that, oh, look, I'm disbanding this uh, unit, or I'm disbanding, uh, disbanding SARS, and now they, they are going, they, there will be another creation, or those guys will then be joining an, an, another, another unit. Then it means that you're still recruiting same set of people and same set of officers. So the same mentality. Know. Exactly. So, so that, that, that's actually my own worry. And like she rightly said, we really need to ensure that we drive this down, you know, the spines of our government officials. We must let them know that Nigerians are watching and we're not going to take, uh, uh, you, you, you know, lies anymore. That, that, that's actually the truth. So if you know that you really want to engage the people and tell us what exactly you want to do, bring it out very clearly and let everybody be, uh, you know, involved in the process. You see, you, 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 what, what is the function of EFCC, for example, when you're talking about financial crimes yeah. and what have you? Because what you're trying uh, to, to, to achieve here, or what SARS has you, you know, been doing over the years, is to now take over the functions of even the EFCC and the ICPC. They want to now go after people who are into cyber crimes, who yeah. are into you know, street robbery and what, all these. What, of course, EFCC is not in charge of street robbery and all that. But when you're talking about cyber crimes, you're talking about um, other menial crimes for which EFCC or the ICPC can actually okay. go in and interrogate or, you know, uh, take charge of, then you, you are now seeing SARS and that is the problem. Let me, let me quickly go to you, um, Honorable Brimer, before we go now. How can the Police Service Commission be reached if we need to lay complaints? Very quickly. Yes, we have uh, lines here. We have, uh, you can reach the Commission on 070-3407-2677. 070-3407-2676. I can repeat the lines again. On okay. SMS, reach us on 070-3407-2676. The second, 070-3407-2677. Send SMS anywhere you are, the commission will receive it. Then we, our email is info at psc.gov.niger. We're on Twitter, at police service C2. And then our website is www.psc.gov.niger. Please get to, just get to us with your complaint, and we will rightly address those complaints. Like I said, we are the only constitutionally empowered body to supervise and take measures against the police. Every other reform you are talking about, we come to naught. If you are, you are not empowering the only body that has the constitutional power to, right. to look at the supervision, we are, it is it's our job to supervise. Every All complaint right. against the Nigerian police ideally is supposed to come to the commission. And the commission takes the right constitutional steps to redress them. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Uh, you want to say something quickly? Yes, I think, very you see, in, in this country, we must begin to know that Nigerians are not interested in, you know, whether it is this commission or that commission and all that. What Nigerians are really interested in is justice. And then the ordinary man on the street would not even know the police service commission. What the ordinary man on the street knows is the police force. And then when I go to a police station, I deserve justice. I want to see that my right is being taken care of and that nobody is trying to trample on my right. That's exactly what we must begin to tell us. Ourselves. If the Nigeria Police Commission needs to go to the National Assembly to enact any law or to lobby the National Assembly to do whatever thing, yeah. just so they are able to take charge of their constitutional mandate or their activities, they should do it. It is not the Nigerian people that will go on the streets and then start saying that the Police Commission, <laughs> uh, you know, the Police Service Commission. We need, is, we, we need is, to go, but I need to just say goodbye so to Ndikato. I know you've lost your voice, but a final word very quickly, one sentence. No, what I feel right now is that young people, we shouldn't back down. We haven't gotten what we're looking for. At this point, this announcement feels like you are isolating protesters because most Nigerians don't even know what is happening. So they would say, oh, they have ended SARS, why are you on the street? It's the same way they ended it all the other years. We are not satisfied with those five things that the IG listed. We are not satisfied with the response of the police to this. We demand justice for everybody, every single Nigerian that has been affected by SARS. We demand that a panel be set, they be heard, and justice be served. And right now, All an right. inquiry should be set in the conduct of the police in the NSAS protest. Because even for the protesters, we demand justice. Thank you, Ebuta. Thank you very much, Indicato. Thank you very much, Honorable Bremo and Wale Oshinde, for joining us today. The conversation is just starting. I believe there's a lot that needs to be happening. And uh, we're looking to the Nigerian police force and the Nigerian government to do the right thing. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you next Sunday.
Say, hey! 